So this is the Craftsman Rabbit and Philister plane. This is a number 619-3730. It was manufactured by Sargent Manufacturing Company sometime before the year 1964, because evidently that's when they stopped making hand planes. So I uh, bought this particular tool at a local antique mall for around 40 bucks. Uh, it's in really, really good condition. Um, I was glad to find it in the box. Uh, when I bought it, it did not have this rod for the fence. It did come with the fence and the depth stop, which is unusual. I ended up having to make this particular rod. What came with it was a screw. Somebody had taken a screw and uh, or a bolt and was using that as the uh, rod for the fence. So I know that this particular rod that I've made works, but it's not like the original. I would have to remake it and try to make it like it was originally, but this suffices and it works well. So I'm not probably not going to change that. But anyway, um, this particular plane is, like I said, it's in really good shape. It's not, there was no rust on it anywhere when I got it. Whoops. Stand that back up. And uh, so here we have the knicker, the depth stop, and the fence. All the pieces and parts are there. So let's take a little bit closer look at it. First, I'd like to take a look at this little catalog here. I thought this was a really, really cool find. It came with the plane in the box. It's seen better days for sure. But uh, it talks about the various kinds of hand planes that craftsmen made. I did not know that they made the Dunlap line of planes until I got this catalog. So I thought this was a really cool find. I just, I just love history. Well, that's a little bit overexposed, isn't it? Um, so, here is the hand plane that I have. It's a 619-3730. And it uh, says the rabbit and philister plane is specifically designed for planing grooves or rabbits on the edge of a board. It has a width gauge and a depth gauge as well as a spur, which scores the wood in advance of the cutter blade. The spur prevents tearing of the surface, uh, excuse me, of the surrounding wood not being removed by the operation. There are two cutter seats. When the cutter is placed in the forward seat, the plane can be used as a bullnose rabbit plane. The adjustable arm and fence can be placed on the either side of the plane, making a right or left hand philister. Sides are ground and polished. Yeah. Brighten that up a little bit there for you, but I just thought that this particular little, uh, this particular catalog here, this little catalog was really cool, and uh, so on to the uh, actual plane itself. So the hand plane itself, you have your cutter here, and. This is your lever cap. 
you loosen your lever cap with this thumb, thumb screw. There we go. Okay. So then you can remove your cutting iron, I think. Okay. Don't know how well you'll be able to see that because my phone doesn't seem to focus real well. There you go. So you can see it does say Craftsman, made in the USA, 619.3730. I guess the 619 is a designation that lets you know that it was made by Sargent. I do not know. So, then you have the fence. And this is the fence rod. Let me uh, remove that. Okay. So the original rod would have had a hole on the end. You know, you could have used an awl or a nail or something to tighten it up. But when I made this one, I just put a slot in it for a flat-headed screwdriver and uh, it works you know works pretty well so you have your two beds here one for forward you can use this as a bullnose rabbiting plane and uh, this is the position it's normally the blade is normally in and so then you have your depth adjuster And if you own a Philister rabbiting plane, this is this is nothing new. This is just old hat, you know. And there's a little groove here that you have a a portion of the depth stop here that rides in this groove. And so then you have the knicker. And unlike the Stanley 78, this uses a, a round knicker. And evidently, earlier versions of this particular Philister plane had a knicker that is similar to the one that the Stanley 78 uses. But this one here uses this round type of knicker, and this just severs the fiber. This is basically used when you're doing cross-grain work. This little knife right here will sever the fibers of the wood as you operate the plane across grain. And so here is just the plane body itself. And uh, there is some wear. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not in brand new condition, but it's in very good condition as far as I'm concerned. Um, I mean, like I said, I paid 40 bucks for this thing, uh, and I was very happy to pay that. Uh, it's got the box, the catalog, all the parts, except for the rod, which was easy enough to make. And so I was very pleased with this little hand plane. Let's put this thing back together, and I've got a little bit of a video that I'll uh, show you um, how I use this. Okay, before I demonstrate how to use this Craftsman Philister rabbiting plane, talk about the blade and how it should be set in relationship to the side of the plane itself. Now, there are a couple of schools of thought here. One 
is that the plain iron should be exactly flush with this surface of the plain body. Okay, there are others who believe that the plain iron needs to be slightly proud of the side of the plain body. Now, uh, Paul Sellers happens to be one of those who believes that the uh, it's best to have the plain iron just a little bit proud of this surface here uh, for this type of plane. Now, a while back, I made his poor man's rabbiting plane, and it has a, a fence on it, and I put a depth, depth adjustment on it. But in this case, Paul Sellers uh, instructed that the plain iron should be perfectly flush with the side of the plane, okay? So there are a couple of schools of thought concerning uh, that. Now, I have set this particular plane iron just slightly proud of this surface. I'm going to take Paul Sellers' advice. And because I'm going to be doing uh, a rabbit with the grain, I do not want to use the knicker this cutting knife. I do not want to use that right now. So I've got that in a position where it won't slice the uh, grain of the wood. That's for cross grain only. So uh, let's, uh, let's give this a shot. I'm going to put the uh, depth, adjust, uh, depth adjuster back on here. And I'll set it for, let's just say, somewhere close to a quarter of an inch. Okay, somewhere around there. And uh, we'll give that a go. Another thing that is sort of up for debate is where to begin the cut okay um, Paul Sellers is a an advocate for starting at the end of the board like so and working your way back okay however there are others who believe that it's quite all right to start all the way at the end of the board and take your cut So, again, you have some personal preference there. Let's try it both ways and see what happens. All right, so we'll start down here at the end of the board. Now, the one thing about this particular kind of plane, and uh, this is usually mentioned by people who use this plane, uh, is that the chips, the chips will get jammed up down in here. And uh, so from time to time, you've got to clear that out. So as you can see, I'm working my way back. I'm cutting deeper on this end than I am up here. So let's try the other method, where we're going to take a full length cut beginning here. Now what I'm doing is I'm holding my fingers against the fence here and my thumb here, being sure to apply pressure uh, into the corner of the board. Now 
feels like I may need to put some wax on this. Put some there along the sole. So, you know, I don't think that it really matters whether you start down here or whether you start down here. I think your end result is going to be the same. Um, but, you know, men like Paul Sellers have been doing this longer than I've been alive. And so I have a great deal of respect for their skills and experience. But in the end, the, the result's the same, right? So now one thing that you gotta check is looking at this surface and making sure that you're not canted like so at an angle. It's real easy when you're using the plane to let it do this, which is gonna create an out of square joint and out of square rabbit so for as much as you can hold it as squarely as you can I think I'm almost almost to depth here Okay, so there we have a rabbit. Okay, so here is an example of uh, not holding the plane correctly. You can see right here that I did not have my plane held squarely, and so I've got a little bit of an angle right here in this corner where I didn't uh, I didn't hold it correctly so that's what can happen when you don't hold the rabbiting plane um, squarely so now we're gonna get set up and do a cross grain cut and so the first thing that I gotta do is I gotta rotate this knicker down here so I'll move the adjustment, the, the depth adjustment out of the way. And according to the instructions in the manual that I have, tells me that I need to rotate this uh, into the fourth notch so you can see that it has these notches right let me just drop it here real quick again I'll drop it and so I want to rotate it so that we have one two three one more notch right there one, two, three, four. Okay, so we'll put the flathead screw back in. And we'll set the, uh, the depth adjustment, adjustment. Yeah, easy for me to say, huh? We'll set that again uh, to the same depth that we were we cut with the grain. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is this cutter, the knicker, is going to score the surface of the board. It severs those fibers so that the cutter 
uh, doesn't create a boatload of tear out. So I'm going to drag this across the material. And you can see there, it creates this knife line. So that now, when I go to use the cutter, see now that's, that seems, that seems, I've set that according to the manufacturer's instructions and that just seems a bit too high. So let me make an adjustment to that because I don't think that that's, uh, I don't think that's right. It just doesn't feel right. It's not allowing the, it's not allowing the blade to engage. Okay, so um, other positions don't seem to work correctly if you don't have that knicker in the right spot. So let's see how this just goes here. That doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right. I'm going to disengage the knicker. That doesn't seem like it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But it seems as though it's not allowing the cutter to work the way that it's supposed to work. So I'm going to disengage the, the knicker. All right, so let's give this a go again. Okay. There you have it. Creating a rabbit along the grain and across the grain with the Craftsman Iron Philister and Rabbiting Plane number 6193730. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, Give it a thumbs up. Be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss out on content that I post. Take care, and we'll see you in the next one.